Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to take a look at electrostatic precipitators. I'll show you why we have them, how they work, and we'll look at some of the main components. So before we have a look at an electrostatic precipitator, or ESP for short, we're going to have a look first at where the entire process begins prior to us reaching the ESP. So this is a water tube boiler. You'll see it in power stations. If you haven't already seen the video associated with this, then check that out. It's a 15 minute introduction. It tells you exactly how the water tube boiler works. If I take a cross section, you can see we've got rid of some of the parts. Let's just make it a bit more easy to see what we want to have a look at. We get combustion in the water tube boiler in this space here. Pulverized coal is sent in from either side of the furnace, it's blown in pneumatically. We'll ignite that coal and then it's going to burn. If you have a fire in your back garden or anywhere else for that matter and you're burning some wood or coal, then you'll notice there's ash left behind. You have a fire, you get loads of smoke, and then once the fire's died down or been extinguished, you'll have a pile of ash as well. The ash in the water tube boiler is called heavy ash, and it's actually going to drop out of the base of the boiler into collection hoppers. So that's heavy ash. When we have combustion within the water tube boiler, some of the ash is actually going to be blown out of the boiler. It's going to be carried up here. Some of it will settle on our superheaters and other parts, etc. But a lot of it will come down here, go past our reheaters and economizers and stuff like that. It'll go along here where my mouse is flowing, down here, and then it will come out through these two ducts here. We're actually going to draw the exhaust gases out of the boiler using an induced draft fan, although this really depends upon the design of the boiler. Induced draft simply means that we're drawing the process air in on one side and blowing it out of the other. Our process air or process gas in this case is gas from the water tube boiler. So we've got the fly ash, this light ash coming through the boiler. And then what we could do, we could just send that up through a chimney or what we call a stack. And then we just blow it out into the atmosphere. We actually did this for a very long time, going all the way back to the industrial revolution. And it's the reason why places like Manchester and England and London and Newcastle were heavily covered in dust and ash. There's actually an area within the UK that encompasses Wolverhampton and Birmingham, and they refer to it as the black country. And it's because there was so much industry in the area, there was so much coal being burnt, that the sky was black. And this ash would settle all over the buildings, on fields, on cars, people would breathe it in. And that, back in 1900, was just pretty normal. Nowadays, it isn't so normal, and we don't really want to be breathing in fly ash. The reason being, it causes cancer, it causes respiratory diseases. People who have trouble breathing will have even more trouble breathing if we have ash flying around in the air. And aside from that, it could also land on fields, which raises the pH level of the soil. Or if we dump a lot of ash onto a single place, such as a field or somewhere near a river, then we may get chemical leaching, which is also really bad for the environment. So it's not acceptable just to blow exhaust gas out of the boiler with all the fly ash into the atmosphere. So let's have a look now at how we're gonna separate the fly ash from our exhaust gas stream. Here's a nice example of a coal-fired power station, a thermal type power station. Our coal would actually be stored in these two areas here. We've actually got a roof on this area, so it's under cover. That means that our coal stays dry. We're going to draw it out through conveyors and then we're going to come along here, away from the storage area, up our inclined conveyor, and then into the boiler house or the power station. It's going to go into our boiler. That's our water tube boiler. It's going to come out. You can see here's one of our ducts that we saw earlier. It's going to pass into this item. It looks a bit like a Lego block or four blocks put together. And these items are our electrostatic precipitators. After that, the exhaust gas comes out comes along here, goes to our flue gas desulfurizer, or FGD. We've also got a video about that if you want to check that out. And then finally, it will go to our cooling tower, which we've also got a video about, and the exhaust gases will be blown out of the top. 
can actually see here there's the pipe connection and we'll discharge the exhaust gases out of the top of the cooling tower and into the atmosphere. By the time the exhaust gases are discharged from the cooling tower or via a stack, they're actually quite clean. They have to be because, as I mentioned before, people don't want to be made sick if they're living near a power station and we don't want to damage the environment either. I hope now that you understand exactly how an electrostatic precipitator works, what the main components are and why we have them. If you want to learn more about engineering or present, instruct using any of the 3D models that I've used in this video, then head over to savry.com. We've got hundreds of interactive 3D models. We've got over 45 hours of engineering video tutorials and video courses and many other engineering related resources. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much for your time.